Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is a depressing video, so tune away now, because this one is sad. There's just, it's sad, and, and it'll make you angry, probably as well. I want to talk about Bill Joska, who is a comic artist. You may have not heard of him, but you've most likely seen some of his work. He did a lot of work for DC and for Marvel. He was a comic artist on Sable, which a lot of people from the, uh, certainly the 80s remember very fondly. Um, Teen Titans, uh, The Hulk the uncanny x-men um he, he bill Jaska. he there's a there's an image you probably have seen of the incredible hulk fighting santa claus but santa claus is actually the rhino and uh there's this image of forge who's kind of uh you know screaming as he's ripping off uh what appears to be his dog tags he uh was uh, somebody who i think an incredible artist who had the deep misfortune of following in the footsteps of, of very, very famous artists. So Jaska uh, followed uh, George Perez on uh, Teen Titans. He followed Dale Keown on The Hulk. He followed, uh, you know, it, he was on Uncanny X-Men, the very uncomfortable place between Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee. And so as a result, I think he got a lot of criticism. It was, it was a, who's this guy, you know, when he would show up to do comics. Um, Bill was 48 years old when he died. Um, unfortunately it, it was, uh, he died as far as we can tell, um, living on food stamps and residing in a boarding house where nobody really knew who he was. Um, the comic industry loves to talk about how it's a very small tight knit industry, how it looks after its own, how it, uh, it takes care of its own. You see a lot of that today and, and you see a lot of of kind of very angry behavior from comic professionals talking about how it's a small industry and if you if you do the wrong things piss off the wrong people then um, you know or don't don't take care of your fellow comic uh, professionals your peers uh, that you could be excommunicated that uh, you know bad word gets around um, there there isn't there as far as I can tell there's not bad words about Bill Jaska he he did not have a controversy he wasn't uh, you know a, a you know, a problematic person, uh, as, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he died in 2009, and there was not, uh, there, there wasn't any sign of, of issue. He was a relatively quiet, pretty isolated person. Um, this is common in comics that a lot of people tend to withdraw, and, and uh, you know, they, they're not in the public spotlight. Uh, they, they, it's a working from home job. It's easy to fall through the cracks, and that's what happened here. Uh, I, I was reminded of Jaska. I, I re heard about his passing. I remember being sad about it at the time. And it was brought back to my attention recently during an interview I was conducting because uh, Jaska was doing the, uh, the work on the Swamp Thing annual that Nancy Collins uh, during her run. And uh, he had apparently uh, suffered, unfortunately, from some level of, of mental breakdown or, or some problem. And, and here's where the story gets both tragic and frustrating. He clearly had uh, an, an issue in the 90s, and he, he struggled uh, there uh, in what he was doing. And then he, he basically um, continued to do fill-in work for a lot of other comics uh, during that time period. Um, but then he just kind of disappeared, and nobody really went looking for him. Uh, he he went. To, his last issue appears to be issue twenty three of Turok, the Hunter for Acclaim. Um, he was uh, you know, and and again, nobody was running around talking about how this was a legend in the industry. He was just rapidly forgotten. Um, we can ascertain at least from reporting that a couple people have done that his eyesight may have started to go. It looked like he was at his time of death trying to get uh, examined and, and trying to figure out what could, could be done um, with, with his art. He appeared to have given up art completely uh, as a profession, uh, but he vanished. He was living on food stamps. I mentioned before he was living in a boarding house. Um, from, you know, in the, in the nicest possible way, as people have noted, it appears that he died painlessly. He went up in theory to his room, he lay down in bed and he died. Um, nobody knew that he was dead for quite a while. In fact, the comic book industry, uh, didn't know he was dead for well over a year. He just, he just vanished. And 
that is th- this this guy who um, again not not a not a huge name in comics, but a very solid artist. Did some very good work. You, you take a look at his Swamp Thing annual. Take a look at some of his work on Sable. Um, his issue of X Men I remember enjoying, and it was uh, it was a good solid comic. But here's the end result, and that this is a problem that we see with it. This industry, we see a lot of people who just fade away. They they vanish. Um, they you know sometimes they're able to recover people. Uh, Keith Pillard, Ron Wilson, um, and and they they vanish. Um, I'm struck by a lot of things here. I, I'm struck by the fact that uh, you know you have this person who contributed at such a a you know at high level. I mean, working for the big two, both of them on big books. You know, the Hulk with Peter David, uh, Uncanny X Men, Chris Claremont. Um, certainly his work at DC on, on Teen Titans and, and Shade the Changing Man and, and uh, Swamp Thing. And it, it to, to just disappear, um, you know, obviously as, as somebody who was relatively isolated, we don't have a lot of answers of how he ended up as he did. We don't know why uh, this, this took place. But it is a, it is a common story. It's a common story that the comic industry uh, tends to reward a couple people, uh, tends to, you know, people who get in the spotlight stay in the spotlight, but a lot of people just silently vanish. And in a world where the the big two companies are owned by two of the largest multinational corporations in the world with Disney and and AT&T, it seems strange. Uh, again, not unheard of. These companies obviously have workers uh, who work for them, who fade into obscurity, who who pass away, and and these things happen. It's true. This isn't this isn't limited to comics, and there's no guarantee that if you're owned by a giant corporation that everything works out okay for you. But in an industry that loves to pat itself on the back, that does award shows, that uh, talks about that. I mean, hell, if you go on Twitter and you just follow a handful of comic professionals, you you can't avoid uh, getting in <laughs> getting in the middle of a bunch of people complimenting each other and retweeting and and oh my god chef's kiss for this book and that book and this creator and that's all the rest and yet simultaneously there is a high amount of mental illness a high amount of alcoholism and and drug addiction and, and abuse that happens in this industry I'm certainly not saying for the record that bill suffered from those problems but he was very isolated. He did have reportedly a mental breakdown. He, he is somebody who contributed to comics and then vanished. And so even though he's, he's died now and many of his pages have sold for thousands of dollars, despite that, uh, this guy is, uh, you know, died penniless, died, you know, with a stack of, uh, of letters and bills and, and trying to figure out, you know, conceivably what we can tell is, uh, you know, how, how he was, how he was able to, uh, <laughs> well, he was trying to figure out a way of life. I'm, I'm perplexed. I don't, you know, we, we talk about a number of things that's wrong in this industry. This is the most wrong. The most wrong is that you have people who have contributed at, to it and have, have done great work and then vanish to the point that they die alone in a boarding house. Um, it's, it's painful. It's painful to me. Um, he did not get the recognition that he was due by any stretch of the imagination. Again, he had the misfortune of following, uh, some incredible artists or some incredible artists following him who are huge celebrity artists. And, and that is a, that is a shame, um, because he was very talented and he did do amazing work. We have to do better by our people. And, and when I say that, I mean, not, not the, the fans and customers. I mean, the, the, the odd part about comics and perhaps why I take it personally and get so annoyed when people go after fans is by and large, the fans are the first ones to jump into action when there is a GoFundMe or there is a, a, a you know, some comic creator has a surgery or some, some health problem and they, you know, they have no insurance and they have no long-term commitments for their employers, so they have to go and, and raise money with GoFundMe's. And the fans, almost to a note, do it. I, I went on uh, GoFundMe, and I just searched under comic uh, creators, comic artists, comic writers, 
And there's a staggering amount of people up there who are who you will recognize the names who are trying to raise money for basic health things. And, and what you also see are tons of fans, tons of customers in there chipping in money where they can. Um, good for them. I, I'm glad that the fans are, are helping take care of people who have created so many memories. But the industry does too. Uh, this is unacceptable for this kind of stuff to go on. And this is a this is an older story, but there are stories playing out like this right now, lots of them. And and so while we're busy kind of worrying about you know tweets with ten likes, uh, this is what's going on in the background. I'll, I'll tell you right now, nobody who's uh, dying alone in a in a house like this is is worrying about any of the political BS on Twitter. Um, something to think about. Like I said, it's a sad story. Go, please go check out um, Bill Joska's life. Uh, you can, you can. There's a number of really good uh, blog uh, entries about the guy. You can see some reporting on his death. You can check out some of his art. Uh, go learn about this guy. He's an interesting guy. I think he tried to contribute a lot of cool things to comics, and um, and good for him. Uh, he's he's done some good stuff, and uh, just can't quite wrap my head around how it wound up here. Don't like <laughs> this. <laughs> How do you say like and you don't like and subscribe because of this? But do do uh, you know? Come on, um, this this should be this should not be what happens in comics. Thanks for listening.